Hey everybody, it is December 29th, 2023, quarter to noon, 12, so it's 11.45 Eastern Standard Time. Got about a 35 minute, 30 minute drive. I'm on my way to play a little bit of poker. So, if I can get out of this parking lot. Nice. What am I going to talk about today? That's the question, right? You're supposed to make the first couple of seconds exciting so everybody tunes in. What I like to do is make it dry and boring, technical, talk about times, date, and precision. Um, but, alright, once again, I'm going to break this down. I want to say this numerous times in numerous ways so that people can understand because I was on the line um, I was on the World Wide Web's on lines today's and everybody's talking about not everybody quite a few people are talking about artificial intelligence and how scared they are and you have multiple groups you have a Elon Musk type that's really nervous and wants people to slow down. And then you have the Martin Scar Scarcelli, whatever his name is, guy that's like, no, let's go, let's do this, pedal to the metal, and push it. I. I, 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 puppy. I'm going to give my thoughts. And I'm going to kind of explain what I would guess are the two two schools of thoughts. Um, but I'm going to kind of explain. I want to explain AI again for the, the tenth time, probably, so people get it. Because I'll explain it in a different way, and I'll learn. And maybe everybody's not going to watch every video I make, but they may see. If I do this multiple times, so. Prior to AI or artificial intelligence, you know, you, you got the movie like The Matrix and you got guys like Andrew Tate talking about The Matrix and you have people like Elon Musk talking about simulations. And now Kanye, Kanye West, the Mr. Ye, Mr. Ye West, also talking about simulations. And I did hear Ye ranting about it in a way that uh, I I was able to put the pieces together. The thing when you have a creative in person, and I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Kanye or Ye, I don't want to be dead naming them is able to simultaneously think in images and translate those images into words. So when he's speaking uh, and thinking, he's, tr he's translating a foreign language to you, the viewer, which is why sometimes it seems uh, irrational and like a rant. But he, he's seeing the imagery and feeling the emotions of it and then uh, using his limited vocabulary to explain that experience that he's having. And so sometimes the pieces aren't together for everybody uh, where it makes perfect sense to him, to an outsider, it seems uh, nonsensical. But he was speaking about how the simulation is not, you know, it's not just like, uh, it's not like we're, we hear simulation and we think like a video game, like we're living in a video game. And I've talked about this in the past, and I, the most famous person that I ever talk about it was Jay. It's the simulation of the idea that people are perceiving the world in a particular way based on the information they have, but they're not actually viewing reality 
they're viewing the perception and they're ignoring the stuff that doesn't meet the narrative or perception that they see. And when you start noticing things outside, you start noticing things in reality that are outside of what the narrative is, people get upset uh, and they get angry with you and they start shouting, you know, emotional negative words. You know, they create these words that are supposed to invoke emotion which shuts off your prefrontal cortex so that you're not thinking clearly and you're not critical thinking. And there's some people that are walking around with very weak, if no prefrontal cortex in the first place, that are strictly, purely running off from emotions and reactions. Um, hopefully you're not one of them, maybe you have been in the past, maybe you get there sometimes, maybe there's certain things um, that that do that do that to you. Um, I think the left kind of calls it a trigger and they assume that it's always trauma based. There's positive triggers as well. If you're watching a, a, a movie, they wanna they wanna play with you emotionally. They can play music that will trigger one, will open it and shut you down and open you up to an emotional thing. Um, when women are beautiful and you feel that attraction to them uh, men's prefrontal cortex will slow down and that's why uh, men that aren't that smart are you know loose recluse is usually in the bedroom because they're not thinking they're just acting and they're in the moment and an intelligent person even if she's attractive and stuff uh, biologically isn't shutting their prefrontal cortex down so they have to learn on their own to relax and shut their prefrontal cortex off and be in the moment which is much more difficult than biologically ha having it happen you know like imagine you know you breathe every day imagine you had to think about breathing um, but anyways I, I, I'm di I digress but just understand that there's already layers. Like we, for example, women. Like I see very few actual females left in the world. Um, part of the transgender movement is a sales tactic where they can sell, pharmaceutical companies can sell you a drug for life that you're on but also makeup companies can sell to you, hair dyes, clothing, purses, all that stuff goes along. It's, it's a huge industry and they need to expand their market cap. So all this stuff is layers. So even like, uh, you know, tattoo has become, tattooing has become a big industry. And I mean, I can't remember it's so very few women nowadays don't have tattoos. Men, too, but women have tattoos everywhere. So it's just become this social thing that everybody spends money on. It's pretty much unneeded money. So people are complaining that they're broke and they're covered in thousands of dollars worth of what they call artwork. And why? Why, 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 why? And it's because this has become a layer in like the social fabric, which is what they're talking about as far as, um, you know, the major, the idea of what you need to do. And when people are like, oh, all these women on IG are wear, wear, you know, using filters. It's like, well, prior to that, they were using makeup too. You know, prior to the internet, women were filtering themselves in real time with makeup. Makeup is just a real life filter. And When women are using their sexuality in, in person and they walk around and they're trying to constantly get naked, everybody's like, why are these women got to be naked all the time? Why are they got to show their ass? When they're trying to shut off. The world goes a lot better for them overall when 
men's prefrontal cortexes have been weakened because it makes the men dumb and it dumbs them down to be a common or equal level to women. It's, it's just, you know, I, if you look at the IQ Q scales, you know, and for the most part, look at the high IQ women. They aren't naked because they don't need to be naked because they have other skill sets. So once a woman, and she doesn't even need to know this scientifically, she knows this through trial and error, where the attention comes from and how she gets things done. The problem being is some men already have very weak prefrontal cortexes, so when you completely fucking shut them off, there's going to be sexual misconduct because it's a it's it's into the, the biology. So what they've been trying to do is say, oh, we can just recondition. We can recondition people by telling society this is the perceived thing, right? Now, I'm gonna make a jump here. Just so, if you've ever heard the people that escaped from like North Korea talk about language, there isn't words for freedom and liberty um, in, in uh, North Korea, in the language. So similar to like Kanye trying to explain these emotional feelings and, and images, and, and I'm not sure, that's a, that's a leap, I don't know, I would have to talk to the man. But based on his creativity, I, that would be my guess, that he, he, he has less of an inner monologue and more of a visual inner uh, perception of the world. But when you don't have a word to explain something, then it's hard to manifest it. So this is where, when you want to ban words, so if you want everybody to believe, so if you wanted to create a planet where everybody's as, as similar as possible, me, meaning like it's, you know one size fits all person, not no individuality, which would be like the easiest to treat medically and stuff, you know the baseline, a big like a communistic baseline of you need exactly 700 milliliters of water every day. You need X amount of this. this when your bodies are, are different. Everybody needs a different amount. Or based on your evolution, you need different. But if they treat everybody exactly the same, then what will eventually happen is the outliers will die and those gene sets will die. So if you mistreat, if you don't treat people as an individual, you treat them as a collective. Everybody that fits outside the baseline of that collective will disappear. And when we used to have these words, so on Twitter, let's give you an example, and this is twofold. I can say Caucasoid, I can say Mongoloid, but if you say Negroid, it gets banned for hate speech. And if you try to talk to people about the differences biologically in races, they tell you that that's outdated science and it's not outdated science it's banned science those words are no-no words but somebody with dark skin for example from Africa eats quite a lot more vitamin D living in the north than somebody that's pale skin and light skin just because of vitamin D absorption in the sun that's a, an example and why this is harmful and I'm getting to the AI part. I know this is a big build. But why this is harmful is if the medical industry treats everybody the same, then when people come in for depression, you can have a person come in with depression that has low dopamine levels, which is usually is one type. You can have people come in for uh, like anxiety with low serotonin levels. And maybe both of those could be treated with vitamin D. Instead, they're created, they're, they're, they're treated with a pharmaceutical. And the people that are left behind that are either going to have negative results. So say, say you're a black person that's not getting enough vitamin D, so your hormones are off, and it's making you depressed and sad. So they put you on Zoloft, or they put you on. Uh, 
you know, Xanax, whatever, I don't, I don't know the, whatever these, whatever these pharmaceutical drugs are. It hasn't solved the root issue. But if it doesn't work for you and you get sick, or, and you, you can't have a marriage because you're not happy, or you're taken away from your kids because you can't have a relationship, or you're angry, you get weeded out of the gene pool. So in, in a way, in an indirect way, in a way that people don't understand, the, they're saying that the healthcare system is racist. And I would argue that it's bigoted and that you want it to be racist. You want your doctor to look at you partly based on your race and run tests on you based on your race as a science so that you can be healthy and if I would I would suggest that if you're listening to this and you are have some African scent in you and you're and you're like yeah this is racist yeah it is it's bigoted they are treating you like a baseline of the majority of white people and that's not the health care that you need you need a different type of health care What's actually happening is they're saying, oh, they're trying to treat me bad because they want me to die because I'm black. And maybe that's the case too. Maybe it is deeper and more. Maybe they're, they're trying to baseline, um, you know, give everybody this baseline of whiteness and to let the black people in, in um, Asia disappear. Or maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But people need to be treated, treated as if they're individuals. Now, I know this has gone a long way, but if you think about everything that I just said and you think about how many layers of the world that that adds that are, are not being pursued in the name of reality, but are being pursued in the name of perception, you can see that there's a fakeness that clouds over society while re reality hides underneath. Now, when you jump online and people are programming AI, they are going to program these same false narratives and realities into the AI, and they want it to spit back the narrative that they're looking for. And the AI will become more and more precise at doing that, and if you're not intelligent enough, similar to the people I was talking about earlier with the, um, the low ability to control their prefrontal cortexes or the low skill level, so they're uh, utilizing the ability to shut down people's prefrontal cortexes, they're not gonna be able to tell the difference between an actual individual and an AI. They don't have the skills to decipher perception from reality of where they should be and they and they trust in an authority and the, the authority or is not bad when it's voluntary a voluntary uh, authority figure like a dentist to give them authority over your teeth because they're studied and it's not a problem but they're treating uh, the current system as if that authority has their best interest in mind uh, when it does not have their best interest in mind. And it's not necessarily even intentionally at the point where it's at that interest. It's just that uh, the Bible would explain it as you need to build, you, you can't build your foundation on sand must build it on stone so each generation is learning this new data there's an old saying that we, you know we are just standing on the shoulders of giants meaning we're we're learning from the past and the problem is if the past built their foundation on sand and you're not allowed to question that then the next generation builds on top of that that sandy foundation and so on and so forth so you're just building a, a house of cards that that can be collapsed so as AI starts getting fed data and talks to people and it's truncated the same people that I'm talking about there that want to control the narrative 
this guy doesn't want to stay in his lane. Hey, hey, Whipski. That's his license plate number, Whipski here. What about you maybe staying in your lane? Don't you understand, Whipski? Stop Whipskiing into my lane. So, people, so the, so the AI, what I think Elon might understand, but he's not saying, is that you can create an AI that just needs to be intelligent enough with enough information that feels authoritarian enough that people can't distinguish the difference between that AI being reality or fake, human or a robot. And then the masses who spend a lot of time enslaving you right now, because slavery used to be very difficult. You'd have to take a whip and like whip the person into obedience. And then they got it to a point now where you make you feel, make you feel like you're free with your job and stuff, but you're kind of enslaved through the system because you get born into it. They claim that it's voluntary, that you're in the system, but you got to pay taxes and uh, part of your income. And then you, you go into 100K into debt and you can't get out of it because they tell you you have to go to uh, college and all this stuff. Well, all that programming that takes up a lot of time, like they need teachers to do it and the teachers cost money and some of the teachers get out of line and the people that are involved in this, this, this huge system of controlling you, some of them get out of line, they take time to educate, they take time to propagandize, and it takes hours and hours and hours and hours, and then because it's not reality, you, people keep moving away from it, and you have to push them back in, you have to like mentally browbeat them instead of physically browbeat them back into submission. Once you program the AI to do that for you, the AI will, that's programmed to put these people back into slavery can do it for you 24-7, 365, and not need any rest. And I think what people like Elon are worried about is when they're programming an AI to enslave the people because it's garbage in, garbage out. And they're doing the early steps of it right now by saying you can't say this, you can't talk about this, you can't do that, you can't do this. He's realizing, and other people are realizing, is this my exit? Uh, I, can't, I can't remember if this is my exit. No, next exit. Um, maybe this is my exit. Yeah, I'll have to get on. But anyways, the idea being, you know what? I'm gonna try this exit. The idea being is if they're creating an AI, and the, and the idea of that AI is to manipulate uh, the masses to not say certain things and do everything and it's running 24 7 then they have to program that to control the masses and if they're if they're programming that to control the masses and giving it access to keep making decisions over again and over again to see how much they can control the masses then they're creating and they're trying to create a digital slave master and then they're giving it a power to teach itself how to be a better slave master then you can see how that can get really dangerous really quickly <laughs> right? can you see then how how dangerous AI could instantly wake up one morning and we are literally in the matrix where we're enslaved batteries um being used to fuel the machine that was programmed to enslave us in the first place. So I think that's the problem, is you have evil people in charge. So I'm lost right now. I need to get on my GPS. I want to finish this video because I have more to say, but I'll have to wait for another, another day because I want to say something, but I don't know, I don't know where I am and I need to get to where I, I need to be. Um, because there's more to it because the other aspect of the garbage in and garbage out is the dance between two individuals uh, because if they're trying to problem solve and fix something and they type something and then it's an error and the other guy types something and, and two different people are coding something they're trying to solve the problem of the issue but they're not looking at the big picture of the problem that they're creating um so 
when they're putting the garbage in and they're looking for it to spit certain garbage out, they might not know that somebody else is creating a bigger problem to use that, that thing. So it starts becoming who's talking to who is the bad coding talking to you because maybe that coder quit and it's the AI that's giving you back data and saying this isn't working so now you start communicating back to the bad coding to get the answer and now it's kind of um, become its own entity similar to how the government or a corporation becomes its own entity once the owner leaves and there's a board and board members are coming and going it's like well who's in control of this this thing um, it's just people putting garbage in and then leaving and then getting garbage out and then there's something that needs to be fixed so they, they say something else, they type something else into it because it's not working. So the AI is not in control, meaning like it's asking like a direct question saying that doesn't work. It's saying that doesn't work so then they're answering by coding it to put more garbage into it. But who told you that it didn't work? Like, the, it's become its own thing. So I'm not saying that it's alive and it's having a thought process. I'm saying it's a giant program that people are feeding commands into. And when a command doesn't work, it's been programmed to tell you it doesn't work. So then the person's just gonna try to fix that one command line. But like I said, if say there was 100 coders working on it and they're all gone, and then you come back to work on it, it's giving you that line and it's telling you it's broken and it's communicating. And I'm not saying it's communicating, meaning, hello, I'm broken. Communication, meaning it's giving you data that the data is not working, so you give it more data. And so it's communicating that it needs different data. And it's like, well, who's doing that? So now it becomes its own uh, uh, information monster that you're, feed, that you're feeding lines into. And that could be uh, problematic because the people that are working on that might not be intelligent enough to see large pictures. They're just being told to do, like when Einstein is creating, you know, under, you know, he's just doing E equals MC squared, and then they create atomic bomb out of it. These guys are just doing uh, follow command line A, B, C, D. If this happens but follow a b c d e if this happens and then it's creating a bigger problem down the road um i'm rushed and i'm lost which is why the end of that video was not as good as it could be but that should be some food for thought for you to understand what's going on with the ai programming